Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an ASUS laptop. This was a brand new laptop here. A client brought it in and they want to upgrade the RAM and they told me that on a task manager it says 2 out of 2 RAM is still not available and DIMM is occupied and they want to upgrade it to 16 gig because they do come with an 8 gig and the people on the ASUS they told us that maximum that they can go is 8 gig so that's pretty nonsense because it doesn't matter what ASUS, what uh, the specs on their website tell you. You can check it by yourself. I uh, made a video, short video, how to check your maximum RAM capacity. Check that link on my video if you want to know exactly how much you can actually uh, have um, RAM capacity you can have. I'll leave the link in my video description. Well, sometimes in the website they tell you, no, you can go maximum. 14 gig or 12 gig or 16 gig but that's far from true sometimes so it's better to check it by yourself your max capacity and then you can do the upgrade this laptop can go up to 32 gigabyte of ram it can be upgraded up to 32 gigabyte based on the command line and it they do come with an 8 gig so we're gonna open it up and see how we can upgrade this one and on the task manager it says two out of two RAM slots occupied. So let's see if that's true. All right. First thing first, you want to power off the laptop completely. I did actually cut myself today. Once you go power off completely, you need a screwdriver set. I recommend as always grab the iFixit screwdriver set. From here, we're gonna grab a bit number uh, number one, Phillips number one. Also, you can get the pro version of this screwdriver set, which they will include you with an opening tools and some tweezers that you will need in a future services. But if you don't want to get the pro one, at least get the screwdriver set. And for the opening tool, we're going to be using a guitar pick, a simple metallic guitar pick. These are really suitable to opening covers and cases. And now, at the bottom cover here, we're going to remove all the screws that we see on the cover on the bottom of the laptop. Remember there are three types of screws. There are short screws which are in the front row of the front end of the laptop. There are like a four of them. These are the short ones. Then we got the medium screws which are the side ones and the one in the middle. So this row is a medium. And we got the long screws which are the on the back row. There are three of them. So three longs, three mediums, and four short screws. Remove all the screws and keep them in separate piles so you don't uh, mismatch them. Also, I realized that it's only 1% of my viewers are subscribed to my channel. If you guys want to support the channel, if you like the content, and if it's helping you guys out, you can simply support the channel by clicking like and subscribe to the channel. It would be great, tremendous support for me, and I really appreciate it. I take requests from my viewers, and I answer all the comments all the time. I try to answer them all the time. So... It will be a really great support. If you guys can give me a little bit of support, I appreciate it. Alright, there we have it. Now we, sep uh, we separate them. The mediums and the long ones, they, are like, uh, they look almost the same. But if you compare them, they got one millimeter different. They're a little longer. So let me put them face away. You see, these are about one millimeter longer. So if you put the long one in here, it's going to go over the palm rest. Alright, now that we remove all the screws, all you need to do is grab the opening tool, in this case, my guitar pick, and we're going to stick it between the top and the bottom cover, right there. And then you just want to twist it, and it should simply open up. Just pretty much stick it in there, and twist it. you're not scratching or breaking anything. You do want to hear those clicks, you want to do the sides, go as much as you can to the far back. As much as you can go in the corner, same thing. You want to hear those clicks in here. So you got those opened. Do the side, do the front, and do the left and right side. So go there. So I'm sticking it right there between the gap and twisting it. And there we go. Once I did the front and uh, front end of the laptop and the sides. I'm not going to go to the back, simply I'm going to grab from the front end, from the case. There's a tiny hook in the middle, to release this hook you just have to pull it up a little bit up and wiggle it around a little bit. 
and it will release those hooks. You just have to pull it up a little bit harder. Maybe I will try to put it on this position. So there you go. Once you pull it, the hooks I'm gonna show, once you pull it up from the front end to the back, it's gonna release the back end. Those hooks that are in the middle, they just hold it from the battery in here. So pretty much when you pull it up, try to pull it a little bit, wiggle it around a little bit, and it's gonna release them open. So eventually those hooks, they're gonna get really loose and they're gonna fall off. But the only thing that holds the whole thing together is the screws. The hooks are there for assembly line only. So they're not actually doing anything. Now down here, we're gonna see a horrible design for a cooling design. I don't know who came up with this design that the fan sucks the air right through here and goes over the motherboard to go through here, tiny puny heatsink to come to from the other side. So pretty much you're doing a passive cooling. It's pretty much having a, a PC with a, just a fan on the case on the PC. You don't have a fan, actual fan on a heatsink as they, when you have your PC, you open your personal computer, your PC, you will see a big fan on a heatsink to cool out down the CPU heatsink. The fan should be right over here, but instead they moved it all the way over here, so it's gonna channel the air through here and push it towards here and cool down the whole system. This is called a passive cooling pretty much, and it's not a direct cooling, and it's, it's really bad for iCore 3 CPUs. Anyway, that's not the subject. All right, now we're gonna see the Laptop only has one RAM DIMM here, which is right over here. Obviously, there's not even enough space to put RAM DIMM on the other side of the laptop, but the thickness of this one is not even allowing you guys. So this motherboard only has one RAM DIMM. Doesn't matter what task manager tells you, there's only one RAM DIMM. So we're gonna peel off this cover here. To remove the RAM, you don't need to remove the battery at all to do this process. It's absolutely not necessary. So to remove the RAM, you have to pull these two triggers away from each other. And the RAM should come out in 45 degree angle. And then you just want to grab it and slide it backward from the same angle. As a little thing, this is a 4 gig RAM. So this laptop has an 8 gig RAM. So there has 4 gig right on here. And there's four more 4 gig soldered on the board on the other side of the motherboard. So you have one RAM game soldered on the board and you have one exchangeable. So necessarily that's not a bad thing. So what you can do here to upgrade, you can pretty much you can't do anything about the four gig soldered on the board. So you can remove this four gig and you can place a 16 gig and dim here. So you have 16 gig plus four gig, then you have in total of 20 gig of RAM and it's gonna be a dual channel even if it's soldered on the board. So let's say you get a 16 gig RAM. I'll leave the link in my video description. You wanna make sure the notch on the RAM matches the notch on the RAM dim right there. If you wanna put this stupid heat sink on top, you can do it just by placing it in here and just putting it on top. It's useless pretty much, but go ahead. Now what you wanna do, make sure the notch on the RAM dim matches. You wanna bring it down in 45 degree angle just like this, and you want to push it towards the dim, and then simply slide it towards the motherboard, and you should hear a soft clicking, just like that. When you see the clicking and the legs on the clippers are straight, that means your RAM is in a perfect position. And that's how you upgrade the RAM. Once you have the RAM in there, if you have unplugged the battery, unplug it, but if you haven't, you don't need to. Now all you need to do is to grab the bottom case, bring it on straight, and push down the corners, make sure they snap in. Grab this top side and pinch the top and the bottom cover, make sure it goes all the way in. If you see any opening, just pinch them. Like this one over here is a little opening, so I'm just gonna pinch them together. You can pinch them without pinching the LCD. You don't wanna be fuzzy about that one. So there you go. So now the last thing would be here to put the screws back on. Remember the short screws on the front, the mid on the middle, and the long screws at the back. And again, I hope you guys like this video. Helped you guys to upgrade your RAM for your ASUS laptop. 
If you did, please click the like button. If you have any question or request, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Just gonna finish up putting up the screws, and we are gonna power on to see if it powers on, because sometimes people keep telling me, no, you should remove the battery, it's gonna burn it, so I'm just gonna power it on. I haven't done any upgrade, but I am waiting for the RAM to be a... The client is gonna purchase the RAM, once it brings it in, I'm gonna place it in. So, let's see. Let's power it on. When you power on, you might have to wait a few seconds, 5 to 10 seconds. Asus is F2 to go to the BIOS, I believe, or delete. We got a screen. Uh, we are in the desktop. So, there it works. And that's all. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.